Hello everyone, I'm very excited today. We have the honor of hosting a former governor of the Bank of Spain, Mr. Miguel Ángel Fernández Ordóñez. Dear Fernández Ordóñez, thanks very much for being with us today. Thank you for inviting me, for having me. I would like to ask you about something that affects everyone, but rarely we see it in public debates, the international monetary system. So, first of all, what is it and how does it affect directly or indirectly people's lives? Well, uh, uh, I, I think that now, but it's my view, uh, the the question that we have and the, the 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 task we have ahead more than international monetary system that is how to arrange the different monetary systems of different countries are those national systems. I mean, I think that uh, uh, what is now being discussing is uh, the idea if uh, uh, a monetary system, a national monetary system or a monetary zone system like the Eurozone uh, is based now in, in private money, in uh, bank deposits uh, and then uh, there are other possibilities of private money like cryptocurrency, stable coins or sovereign money public money like the what is called central bank digital currencies i think because because uh, uh, once you have that well of course you should uh, uh, think in the rules that should govern all these different monetary systems uh, different in a sense of the different countries because uh, what would be good for having a, a good international monetary system is that more or less they are based in the same uh, structure, no? And then that's why, I, I uh, uh, of course, we could talk about the international monetary system, but uh, uh, now the international monetary system is the sum of different national systems. And uh, I don't think there are big discussions about the international uh, 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 but uh, uh, what is uh, going uh, a great debate and a great uh, a lot of initiatives many central banks studying the launching of CBDC is the, the the national systems or national not because well in in the the eurozone is a zone with different nations or different states the 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 money zones the monetary zones no that's what I, I think. That's why, uh, of course, if you are interested in any specific question of uh, the monetary system, I will be uh, very glad to, to answer to you. But uh, I, I think now what is being discussed is, uh, is the national systems. So within the international monetary system, various currencies coexist. But uh, the US dollar, if I'm allowed to say, has a dominant role. It is commonly referred to as world's currency, global currency, and has a special relationship to oil. Um, that is to say that the US dollar has international role. What does this mean? And uh, what are the advantages for the issuer of such a currency? Is there a higher profit, which is commonly referred to as to a senior ads? Does it have any other advantages in international relations? Well, I, I think that behind this is true that... Uh... Uh, the, the dollar is the currency that is most used in, in trade and also is most used so far in reserves of central banks. Then and that uh, uh, have uh, one characteristic, I mean, and the other currencies, even the euro, that is important in, in as a national reserve or the pound, are, are more limited than, than the dollar. Behind that, I think there are uh, historical, no, uh, uh, historical character. I mean, uh, uh, that was in the 19th century, or even at the beginning of the 19th century, the role of that international currency was played by the pound, the, the British pound, no. But the dollar displays, and and there are many reasons. One was the importance of the, uh, the, the, the American economy in, in international trade. Uh, other reason is that most of the commodities are priced in dollars. 
And um, in general, I think that uh, uh, they are uh, there is something that is very important and is a, a trust in the American system. Uh, the American system uh, or the U.S. system, uh, it has been a system uh, so far because very recently we see uh, different attitudes uh, in, in relation with trade, the Trump uh, uh, problems and so on. But traditionally has been excuse me, has been a, 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 a system based in the, in the rule of law with a judiciary and so on and so on. Then that gives you, that gives to any agent, uh, investor or trader a, a, a certain trust in that, uh, well, the system is not going to, uh, the, the government of the United States is not going to decide, well, I do that and I take uh, many decisions. What is, unfortunately, very recently, uh, we have seen that the United States have used uh, this, kind of, uh, this kind of actions that are, are, uh, have certain doubts about the rule of law, saying, well, it's or, or not respecting the international rules. The one uh, uh, case that is uh, obvious is the, uh, the tariffs on steel coming from China that Trump approved in his presidency. No? Uh, that was, well, something against the international trade rules and so on. The sanctions that we are seeing now in the, in the war uh, with uh, Ukraine, no? well, uh, the confiscation or you know, the confiscation, the freeze of, uh, of funds of Russia, uh, that could be justified from the point of view of political or whatever, no? I mean, uh, because uh, really the, the 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 action of Russia is terrible, no? But uh, but it goes against this idea that you respect absolutely the uh, property and so on and so on. Then that's why probably uh, this role of 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 dollar could change because uh, well, some countries are now afraid about the possibility that the United States could approve sanctions. And for instance, for uh, the, the, the messaging that we use uh, between the banks and all in, in South Asia and China are thinking in having a different system that we have now with the SWIFT and so on. Then things are changing, but I don't see any country that could uh, 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 compete with the United States even uh, now, even with these bad <laughs> actions uh, in the world, because China, for instance, uh, some people say, well, the renminbi, because they have launched the digital yuan, well, but uh, of course, the judiciary, the Chinese judiciary is not the same like the United States. The possibility that the government take actions are more quick, they ban crypto and so on and so on. And that's why the, the, that I think that the life of, of the life of the dollar as an important currency uh, is something that we will see. It's my, it's my opinion, but of course things are, are changing now. If I say a bit more to the advantages of the issue of this currency. Is it accurate to say that the Fed uh, has the power to print, if I may say, at will dollars as international currency, and by this way increase the purchasing power of the US, of the American people? Well, uh, you you could see I see more, more easy if we see that the profit of printing money uh, is got by the United States. I mean, because uh, when you print a money, you you the cost of printing money is zero or close to zero, and if many people use that money, well, you are getting the profits of the value of the. It's, it's what we call in the jargon of uh, monetary uh, uh, theory and so on the seniorage. Is 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 what the kings obtain when they print a money or they mint money because the, the cost of the money is close to zero, especially now that is just a, a register. No, In the past, uh, well, you have to 
to to use silver and gold and so on and so on. But now, money is uh, the, the cost of printing money is nothing, no. And that is that is uh, uh, true, no. That that is an advantage that uh, the, the the United States have uh, now, no. But at the same time, uh, it's obvious that they have uh, that advantage, but because well, so far the Fed have maintained the value of that money. Uh, it's something that again is changing now. I mean, during the last uh, 30 years, the inflation rate in the United States was well under three percent or something like that. No, uh, if if that change, people are not going to be so happy uh, uh, having dollars. No, and that's why it's very important how the Fed deal with this current crisis of inflation. All the central banks have the same problem because, in my view, they have um, they have committed or made the mistake of, uh, uh, in the last 10 years, against uh, uh, the, the depression coming from the uh, Lehman crisis and the pandemic. Uh, it has been a reaction of printing money that, uh, well, uh, is, 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 is going to be very difficult to 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 manage that and if they don't manage do not manage that uh, i mean we are going to see that the reputation of the central bank go down and then and of course the trust in the in the great monies in the great currencies dollar euro and so on are going to suffer then uh, is is essential in in a fiat money when there is no a back uh, of the of that money that was in the past gold or silver or whatever now there is not the the value of the dollar or the value of the euro is not backed by any asset it's just backed by the trust that the central bank is going to maintain without inflation or moderate inflation and if that uh, breaks down well uh, we are going to we could see some problems no uh, the question is that in the last 10 years, all the history of uh, two centuries uh, uh, have changed. And then we are now in a situation, no? all central banks studying the CBDCs, uh, how to get out from this inflation. Uh, we are now in a moment of, of changing, that's my view. Then it's more difficult to make predictions. You speak about the, um, some profits that, may, that might come from the international role of the dollar. Are you aware of any limitations of how these profits can, can be spent from the, from the Fed or from the U.S. government? I didn't get uh, the question how to, to change. The, well, that is a profit that, of course, uh, get the United States because you print dollars and, of course, uh, the cost is nothing and then... Uh, uh, then there is no other possibility. I mean, uh, I, I think that that could change if we go to what could be the change in monetary system in other countries, you could change the destiny of the seniorage. In my view, uh, if we uh, go to a system where the digital money is uh, sovereign money, is the is CBDC issued by the central bank or an issue entity, then uh, now that profit goes to the to the to the government to the state, no? Because goes to as an income of of the the the, the state. But if the uh, if with CBDC and you don't have uh, deposits because, well, you have to uh, uh, remove all the privileges that commercial banks have and then nobody is going to be interested in provide private money because now banks are uh, interested in, in, in provide money and create money because they have a, a protection, privileges, lender of last resort, warranty of deposit. But if, if you want to liberalize the payments markets and the uh, if, uh, this, uh, the credit market, and you remove nobody, the banks, you don't need to prohibit the deposit. Nobody is going to be interested because there is no any, uh, all the profits that get now commercial bank. Well, if you go to a system based in CBDC and the only currency that you have is CBDC, 
And the question is, who is going to get in the United States, in Europe, in 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 in, in United Kingdom, the benefit of seniorage? My idea is that you should, uh, uh, once you have decided to increase uh, of money by the uh, central bank, you should give that money to all citizens. You divide in the eurozone, and you divide, and you say, "I'm going to increase 22 billion dollars." to have a, a no inflation, no deflation uh, economy. Well, you take two, two, $22 billion, divide by the, Euro, the, the Eurozone citizens, and you put in the, in the account of every citizen, and then the, the seniorage could be, uh, uh, could uh, have, well, you could say it's the same. Well, it's the same, but it's different, because now in all countries, the seniorage go, go to the government. And then it's an in, uh, it's an, uh, uh, an an income of the government that is not tax and is not debt. Then it's a it's a very good <laughs> income because you should not. Uh, in this case that I am proposing and I think is the best because uh, if the government want to have money, they should ask taxes or debt to the citizens. But the citizens are those that are going to get. Uh, the the profit of the money, no. Well, I think we are very far from that because, as you know, well, all the, the lobby, the banking lobby, is uh, uh, delaying the introduction of CBDC, CBDC, saying that you should introduce a lot of limitation and so on. Then we are at the beginning, in my view, of a change. I think you gave me a great pass for, for the next question because I would like to turn back to the notion of the international monetary system. Um, so as for now, do you think that there is, is there something wrong with the international monetary system? Uh, do you think as it is, is it stable? Is it, is the current setup that we have the most optimal structure we could have? And I would like to see your, your point of view because, um, I would like to know if there are any major changes that can be applied in order to serve better the society. Well, of course, this is what I want. And I wrote a book about that that is called in Spanish, but the traduction could be farewell to banks because what, what happens? The, the current system of digital currency that we have in every country, in the United States, in Europe, and so on, you have physical uh, currency and, and digital currency. We don't have any problem with uh, uh, physical currency because uh, 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 in the 19th century, at the beginning of the 19th century and, and 18th century, the problem is that most of the uh, physical currency, the notes, were issued by banks, by private banks. And then you had continued crisis, continued crisis. And then there was a, a great debate in, in, in the United Kingdom, and they approved in 1844 the Peel Law, deciding that the central bank will have the monopoly of issue the physical currency. And, and all countries in the world copy that. Now, you, do, you cannot find any system, national system, that allow banks to issue uh, banknotes. Why? Because, and, and what they get, they got with this decision? Well, you, you don't have crisis because, well, the, 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 the note issued by the central bank, you, you could see that is not uh, have not any any problem because is 50 euros are 50 euros and then there is no what happens with the deposits the deposit the non physical currency that they are uh, not they are not money they are promised to pay money the the problem of uh, of the current system is the problem of digital currency not the physical currency the physical currency have not created any crisis. You have never seen that I had a, a, a banknote uh, of uh, 50 euros, but I had a problem because I could not use that. Or, or I discovered that the, the, the note of 50 euros has become uh, uh, 40 euros. No? Well, it's, it's 50 euros and then there is no possibility of banking crisis and so on. In the past, we had 
problems of collapse of the flow of money. That is the problem of a banking crisis because we call banking crisis, but we should tell money crisis. The problem of the banks is not the problem with a bank bankrupt is that the the flow of money collapse and then that is more serious that all question related with credit. No, it's something that you cannot allow and then that's why you have to bail out banks and so on and so on and so on. Then that's that's the problem of, of the digital currency. And then uh, and until uh, what, what how how the the well the states, the countries has dealt with this problem of fragility. Problem that the banks could not fulfill their promise, and then you go to the bank and they say, no, I cannot, because for many reasons, uh, for liquidity reasons, because I cannot uh, lend my uh, mortgage, uh, or for solvency questions, because you were not solvent, and so on and so on. Then during uh, two centuries, or one century and a half from the, uh, the beginning, what the state did was protecting and giving privileges to the bank to avoid that they enter in crisis. And you have an enormous amount of privileges. For instance, the lender of last resort. The banks are the unique enterprise in, in our countries that if they have problems of liquidity, they go to the central bank and they get liquidity. Why? Because you avoid having crisis. Or the warranty of deposits that was created by Roosevelt in in the 30s of the last century, no? Uh, mm, if people do not trust in banks, they don't put their money there. But if you have the, the deposit warranty by the state, well, people put the money in the banks without any problem. No, uh, uh, no other institution, financial or not financial, have the financing warranty by the state because that offers the possibility with a relatively small cost or nothing have the money of the deposit, no? Then, uh, uh, well, the banks are bailed out, as we have seen during the uh, Lehman crisis. No, no important bank has bankruptcy in, in any country. Probably, well, you could say the Islandia and so on, but in all countries, all the banks have been bailed out. Uh, all taxpayers have put money to save the banks, and uh, then the bank, the bank have an enormous amount of protections. One of the protections is that they, until the central bank issue the central bank digital currencies, the banks are the only institution that have access to public money, because uh, the public money they could have sovereign money in, in digital money because it exists. We call reserves, but. No other citizens, no other enterprises so far have access. The idea of central bank digital money is that this privilege that now have the banks is accessible to all citizens and all. Why the banks use that public money? Because that public money is sure. And then when they, <laughs> they don't trust each other, when they have crisis, they put their money <laughs> in the bank. No, Then... That is, uh, uh, and then uh, uh, what happens now that the, the 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 digital currency, the bank deposits, that is the digital money, that the only digital money that now uh, anybody could use, uh, uh, is is supported and is is uh, uh, exists because of the state support, because the state privileges, state so on. And why this? Because there was no other alternative to the bank deposit. But now it have, have emerged the stable coins and other and the central bank digital currency. Then you have a, the possibility to have a money that do not enter in crisis and so on. Then uh, you don't need to put the protections on the bank. When we have now, people do not understand this, but when they see that there is a sovereign money like the notes that we have now, that do not have any problems, they are going to say, why I have to pay all the protections, taxpayers, lender of last resort, to support a fragile money? And then they will decide what is normal in, in liberalization, that is, remove the protections 
of the banks and then everybody could use uh, payment system based in the sovereign money and so on and so on. Well, then, then this is the, the, the big uh, problem because we have there, and I think that until we don't see any transition uh, program to go from here that we have the, the, to the public money, well, the, the, we are going to see a difficult coexistence between public money, digital money, and private money. Then we are at the beginning of that because only two or three countries have now uh, a, a central bank digital currency. The most important countries do not have that. No? And then the, the, the people, the politicians, well, do not understand this. I mean, it's, it's a little complicated. And the banks have the, the, the support of the idea that is something that has been uh, doing during two centuries. No? And then, uh, then uh, everybody considered the natural situation, maintain the deposit, but... But it's not natural because it's, it's based in the state. Uh, if, if the state removes the protections of the banks, it's not like in other liberalization process, for instance, in international trade and so on. You reduce tariffs and so on, and then agriculture, farmers or industry suffer. They have to adapt and so on, but they survive. If you take the protections of the bank, the banks disappear. It's an existential protection. I would like to stay a bit longer to this topic because um, uh, I think it's important for people to understand how um, the money creation is uh, structured right uh, right uh, today. And I would like to to ask you, which organizations can create money today? Well, the money, the money, and until the quantitative easing, the money was created by banks. All the banks, when they give you, they provide you a loan. They uh, take the the register of it and they put. Uh, you have uh, one hundred thousand euros, and they do, do not have. They put in one part of the balance sheet. I have a, a, a loan in my assets uh, that I uh, gave to you, and I have a liability that is the deposits, and then, uh, and that has been. Until very recently, because until until that moment, the central banks uh, use other instruments to uh, to uh, because the problem that the banks created money is that sometimes you have inflation, but the banks continue to create money, and then you have inflation, or when you have a deflation, they stop the credit, and you have a, a profound deflation, and to correct that. Until very recently, the idea of the central bank was to manipulate the, the interest rate in the short term. And then if I uh, re uh, increase the interest rate, they will not provide loans and they will reduce the inflation and so on. But at this have not worked very well because we had terrible bubbles before the crystal Lehman crisis. And it, it didn't work very well uh, with this use of interest rates during the first years of the uh, recovery after the Lehman crisis, because the banks, even if you reduce the interest rates very, very low, even negative, uh, the banks didn't provide. Why? Because people didn't want it to, 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 to have loans because they were indebted and so on. And that's why it was created the idea of quantitative easing that the central banks started to create money uh, buying to the bank bonds uh, or other assets. That is what we call quantitative easing. No? Uh, they are also doing th with the banks because they could have done with other uh, uh, agents, but they do with the bank. And then that has changed a little no? the, the, the situation. But uh, normally, in a normal situation, the creation of money in our system now based in bank deposits is the creation of bank deposits by the by the the, the commercial banks. Apart from the lending process that you described, are there any other ways for commercial banks to create money? Well, uh, I don't know because well, the main the main uh, the main. Uh, uh, 
the main activity of the banks is lending, no? Well, you could think also if they could buy, could buy bonds also at the same time. Of course, they are creating money, but but the bulk the bulk of uh, of the creation of money uh, has been lending, lending and, and and lending. You create and the problem with that. I mean, we 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 saw in the bubble before Lehman that was very important in Spain, in Ireland, in the United States, in in other countries that the banks uh, were lending and then that lending uh, have the effect of increasing prices of the real estate, then the collateral have a good uh, uh, value and then they increase more lending and so on. Then uh, we, we see the how was very bad uh, the allowing the bank to create money because if it is the central bank who creates money and you are seeing a bubble, that is more difficult because the bubbles are based usually in credit. Bubbles without credit, there, there are some bubbles, but very few. Most of the bubbles are created by credit because you uh, ask for a loan, you invest, and you ask for a loan, and so on. They are. It's one of the good reasons if we recover the idea that the central bank create the money because <coughs> you are not going the, the macroeconomic situation are going to be more smooth. We are not going to see these bubbles and the uh, depressions and so on and so on. It's one of the good things because the central bank is thinking uh, they don't have any profitable activity. And then the, 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 their only objective, it should be the only objective, is no inflation, no deflation. I would like to, uh, to, to actually to present a famous quote from 2010 by Mervyn King, a former governor of the Bank of England, who said, of all the many ways of organizing banking, the worst is the one we have today. You speak about alternatives, but I would like to, to see if there is a holistic view um, in this topic. So are any other alternatives that nations could or should explore? In other words, what nations can do about it in order to improve stability and ultimately people's lives? Well, I think that uh, the idea is the idea is view the problem we have. I mean, that that was an expression of Mervyn King. I remember after that he wrote a book that was the Alchemy of Banks. Uh, uh, tra tra uh, tra uh, giving the idea of the banks who want to do something that is like the alchemy. That is, they want to offer deposits in the short term and invest in the long term and then it's, and without any problems. And that's what he said. It's, it's curious because in the book, instead of saying, well, the problem is the bank deposit, he introduced additional regulations like the Basel III for liquidity and so on. Then uh, the solution to the problems was continuously more protections and more regulation because I, I have not spoken about the regulation, but uh, uh, to avoid the problems with the banks, you need to protect, you need to give privileges, but at the same time you have to approve Basel III that tells the bank that they, con they cannot provide a loan if they don't have a collateral and so on. And, well, two million words. Of uh, is what is Basel III in the capital directive of the Eurozone and the law, the Dodd Frank law in the United States, and and then yeah, liquidity ratio and many many things, many things that are regulation. No, then that's why I think the view uh, or the, the the problems uh, we have because what has happened now that that this kind of protection and regulation has. Uh, had the effect that you don't have competition in providing payments and on in on, in credit because you have a, a, a regulated oligopoly oligopoly that is the banks but no other uh, enterprise that want to provide you payments and so on can enter because well the, those protections avoid the problem then from my point of view is a case of liberalization and deregulation of payment services and lending services. But uh, uh, what, what is what we have to do uh, is to uh, have a free market, uh, liberalization in providing services and in providing lending. 
But for that, you have to remove the protections of that and you need a safe money, and a, and a money that is a safe asset. You need a CBDC or whatever you can call sovereign money and so on. Then, why? Because if you don't have that, you need those protections. All those protections and all the system now that we have, the state making regulation of the bank, is needed. It's fully justified because if not, you have crisis. But because you are afraid, because it's, it's very fragile, the, the, that money, but if you have a money that is not fragile, like the physical money now, you can say, well, you can do with the money what, what you want. What happens with the physical money? You can use, you can pay, you can do it because you are not going to create many problems. If you have a CBDC and the payments are based in a currency, in a money that is not unsafe, that is not risky, you don't need to protect anybody. What whoever wants to provide payments could provide. Of course, uh, you need to be regulated and so on, but not like now with the protections of the state. It's curious, it's curious because, for instance, uh, the, the, the stable coins are very similar to, to deposits. It's a promise to pay. I am a crypto, no matter, but I say that I change your dollars or your, yeah, because most of them uh, work with dollars, no? You put $10,000 and you could recover your $10,000 in any moment. It's, it's very similar to deposit. And it's curious that uh, 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 many people that are thinking in regulate uh, stable coins in the States and in other, and of course the, the, the some stable coins propose that they have also the protection of the state because if not, we are going to have problems. But that's not the right way. The right way is to say no. You, I accept a stable coin if you are backed 100% by sovereign money. Then I don't have any problem because if you each uh, stable coin is backed by sovereign money, you cannot have runs, you cannot have entering crisis and so on. But now the debate of stable coins is very curious because it is probable that the uh, in, in some countries, the, 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 the adoption, the regulation of stable coins was uh, not uh, was to provide insurance or provide lender or large resort. What I think is a mistake because what we have is to take all protections to the deposits and not provide those protections to the new money. If you want to have a stable coin, you have to be backed by 100% of sovereign money. In this case, is, is that the proposal of Irving Fisher to Roosevelt in the, in the 30s? Uh, that was called the narrow bank. He said, well, I have a proposal to avoid banking crisis and is to require the banks to divide in two uh, enterprises. One that is lending, of course, and the other that is in charge of payments. They should have all the resources, all the, the deposits in the central banks then you don't have any problem. That was called the narrow bank in the jargon of the historians and so on and so on. Uh, unfortunately, the, the banking lobby went to Roosevelt and said, no, we could solve this problem if you approve the insurance uh, of deposits and have been spread and all countries have warranty of deposits. That had not solved the problem. In fact, they have introduced an anti-free market because uh, before the insurance of deposit, at least the citizens could uh, see if this bank is going to be much more sure than others and they are going to study if they are solvent and now. But now you don't mind. You have your money in the worst uh, bank in the world that is the same that if you then when then you are destroyed, the, the market discipline has been destroyed because the state insurance deposit, no? Then we have what I think that is the last sector. We have liberalized, liberalized international trade, telecommunication, air transportation, uh, retail. China and other communist countries have introduced free markets and so on. But we have a, as part of our system that is totally state intervened. State protected, state regulated. That is the is the is banking. It's curious because I think this is the last, the last liberalization 
probably that is needed. And, and it's needed not just for liberalization, that is good, because we, if we have a, 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 the, the, the payment services market changing, we could see innovation. We, we could see many, many things that nobody imagined now. It's like the liberalization of telecommunication. Nobody thought in the smartphones, but it's a consequence. A smartphone would have been impossible if you maintain the monopolies of telecommunication because they... Uh, they decided what services and so on and so on, or the WhatsApp and so on. No? Who thought in WhatsApp? The, the good thing of a liberalization is the innovation. And it's something that is impossible to predict. We know that if there is competition, there are innovation. If there is no competition, no, we saw in the communist country, I mean, you have no, no, the, the worst uh, automobiles, the worst, the worst, because you don't have the, the idea of, of competition uh, the, the, that is the, the driver of innovation. No? <laughs>